When the branding team at Kenya Airways came up with the phrase, the pride of Africa, they didn't know that they were probably invoking the consequences of pride. As the good old book says, pride cometh before a fall. Established in 1977 as a government entity, but privatized in 1996, Kenya Airways was on the ascension, flying all over the world and putting Kenya on the map. The 2000s were the best of times. While KQ's red, green, and white birds dotted the skies with pride, the balance sheet enlarged and the profit soared. For 9 out of 10 years, from 2002 to 2012, KQ was making an average of 3 billion shillings in profits every year. The plaudits had no choice but to shower KQ with praise. By 2005, Kenya Airways won the African Airline of the Year Award five times in seven years. In 2007, SkyTeam, the second largest airline alliance in the world, welcomed Kenya Airways as one of the first official SkyTeam associate airlines. In 2008, KQ won the Company of the Year Award for Strategic Planning and Emergency Preparedness, as well as Manager of the Year to the then director Paul Casimo. Travel News and Lifestyle Magazine voted Kenya Airways as African Airlines of Choice and Best Regional Airlines. Although he was not a pilot but a mechanical engineer, Titus Naikuni, a Harvard-educated manager, was at the helm of KQ, a man who, although not a giant, had made a huge impression in the private sector and as part of the Dream Team. However, in 2013, KQ hit turbulence. As expected, Captain Naikuni would stay safely for safe landing. But it was far from that. KQ was nose diving. For a decade, 2013 to 2022, KQ has not made a single cent in profit. In fact, KQ made an average of 16 billion shillings in losses every year. While it is true that in 2020 the COVID pandemic caused an industrial recession across the board, it's also true that upon return to normalcy, businesses were expected to recover in 2021 and going forward. But our beloved KQ once voted the most valuable company in East Africa, still made a loss in 2021 of 15.9 billion shillings. Meanwhile, KQ's main competitors, Ethiopian Airlines, made a profit of 150 billion shillings, while Qatar Airlines reported 225 billion shillings profit. This is despite the headwinds of the worsening global economic outlook, rising fuel costs, and the global pandemic. Here at home, in the same period, KPLC made a profit of 8.2 billion, Equity Bank made 40 billion shillings in profit, and Safaricom reported 77 billion for the same period. But the biggest loss was to the investors. KQ's shares, which had been cross-listed in Kenya and Tanzania, crashed from a once high of 147 shillings to a low of 3.8 shillings. The shares were suspended from trading in 2020. In a decade, KQ had lost value by 98%. It means if you had 3.8 shillings for each of the 5.6 billion shares at KQ, you would need 21.3 billion shillings to buy the whole of Kenya Airways. That is half what a Boeing Dreamliner 777 would cost you. But would it be worth it? No. Because you would inherit 81 billion shillings in debts and 160 billion shillings in accumulated losses, meaning you would be bankrupt even before you got to the JKA gates. What happened to KQ? When did the storm that caused the turbulence start forming? Why did the pride of Africa become a fall? And who is to blame? Because the murky waters from these events are still showing up in our drains today. And this is why you should be concerned. You are a shareholder through the government, and billions of your money, that is taxes, are being used to bail out KQ every year. If you are new here, welcome. We discuss business and the financial crimes that are perpetrated in boardrooms. Kindly subscribe to this channel, leave a like and a comment, but more importantly, sit back and enjoy this mini documentary. In 1999, 
President Moy appointed a team of Kenyan technocrats sponsored by the World Bank, who were known as the Dream Team. These technocrats included one Titus Naikoni. They were engaged by the government to turn around the economy. In this capacity, Naikuni served as permanent secretary in the Ministry of Transport and Communications and was a member of the board of Kenya Airways. It was therefore natural for him to transition to be the CEO of Kenya Airways in 2003. He was a dream appointment, leading the airline through years of profits and transparency. But wherever there is success, corruption is lacking nearby. Political bigwigs, clever in masking the intentions, had infiltrated the airlines and were looking for a way to steal from the successful airline. The puppet masters prevailed upon the management at KQ and together they came up with a way to loot from the company. In 2011, amidst pomp and fanfare, Titus Naikuni launched Project Mawingu, an ambitious 10-year plan to increase the number of KQ airplanes and travel destinations. Soon, it was clear that this was the looter's way of hoodwinking the public. The project, on paper, was a marketing masterpiece which would allow KQ to compete with the Ethiopian airline and Qatar airline. But in reality, it was an opportunity in looter's paradise. The project was to cost 360 billion shillings. In 2011, Kenya Airways was supposed to be the launch customer for Boeing 777. Feasibility studies had indicated that this model was the best for business, fuel efficient, big enough for cargo, and safe for passengers. But the management rejected the technical study and instead ordered 10 Embraer aircrafts from Brazil. This change of mind had two immediate economic effects on KQ. One, Kenya Airways was beaten by Ethiopian Airlines in ordering the Boeing 777. It resulted in immediate profits for the Ethiopian Airlines. Kenya had to wait another three years before receiving its first Boeing 777. Kenya Airways was late again. The first time Kenya Airways was late was when it went to Ayata for its codename. Korean Air was already there and had picked KA, meaning Kenya Airways could not be abbreviated as KA and had to settle for KQ. 2. The preferred embryal aircrafts were narrow-bodied and with single aisle. This is a disadvantage compared to Boeing's wide body with two aisles because of the cargo space. The Embraer aircraft could not carry cargo, which was an important cash cow for the airline. An expert estimated that from cargo alone, KQ was losing 100 million shillings per month. But that was only the tip of the iceberg. 2012 Kenya Airways had a rights issue at an offer price of 14 shillings per share, raising 14.5 billion shillings. At the same time, a 200 billion shillings loan was taken from financials through special purpose vehicles, SPVs. To understand special purpose vehicles in financing, think of the moment that you walk into a shop to buy a phone. You are registered as the owner after you pay the seller. In case the authorities need to trace the owner of the phone, records will lead them to you. But now imagine there is an anonymous person for hire, and it is only you who knows that person. This anonymous person is allowed by the law to be secretive. So you hire this person to buy the phone on your behalf. You use the phone, but it cannot be traced to you. Special Purpose Vehicle is a multi-billion dollar business by tax havens like the Cayman Islands that register them. These SPVs have no beneficial owners, meaning should it go into bankruptcy, the real owners would not be affected, hence the phrase bankruptcy remote orphan. The masterminds of the Mawingu project had an SPV registered in the Caymans known as Amboseli Limited. It was thereafter that Amboseli Limited received the 200 billion shillings to buy the 10 Embraer aircraft from Brazil 
at the manufacturer's cost. The Embraer aircraft were therefore owned by Amboseli Limited. KQ would thereafter lease from Amboseli Limited at market rates. A report by Deloitte showed that this arrangement inflated the cost by 400 million shillings. KQ's lease costs contribute 25% of its operating costs. During the 2015 Senate Committee on KQ, the senators were unable to establish the owners of Amboseli Limited. Thanks to the SPV, close to 1 billion shillings was pocketed by the unidentified looters. In the year ended 2015, KQ made another loss for the third year in a row, 29 billion shillings. Titus Naikoni had resigned, leaving his project in mid-air. This would prove hard to navigate by another captain, no matter who or how hard they tried. So bad was the free fall of KQ that even the existing CEO preferred to buy cows instead of KQ's shares. He famously said during the 2015 Senate Committee hearing, I never bought Kenya Airways shares when I was in charge as CEO. Instead, I bought cows. Years of corruption and mismanagement have reduced KQ into a purely valued shell. What this means is that the company cannot raise cheap funds from the capital markets, like the rights issue of 2012, and has to rely on expensive loans to finance operations. In the end, the financial costs are transferred to the ever-burdened customers. A fair comparison done by the Center for Vision showed that KQ charged about 230,000 shillings on the Nairobi-London route, compared to the Ethiopian airline, which charged about 94,000 shillings. The South African Airways charged 88,000 shillings. 